Good morning. Pat Zemer here with MagnaWave. Glad to be with you this morning. Uh, got a little signal that came up there and I just got a little confused by what it was telling me. Uh, but we're glad to be here with you this morning on the MagnaWave office hours. Uh, we're in the Express. I'm in Florida uh, working with some veterinarians, some dressage people, uh, heading down to Wellington. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, now that we're getting a little more acclimated to uh, the MagnaWave Express and uh, where we're heading. So I'm glad to be with you this morning and I want to answer any questions that you may have with regard to MagnaWave, PEMF, the machines, training, uh, marketing, whatever your questions may be that you have for us, just be sure to uh, let me know and uh, put them up and I will be happy to answer them. If you would like to, if you'd like to uh, give me, uh, talk to me personally, you can uh, text your uh, name and number to 502-599-9972 and I will phone you back and we can have a conversation about something that you would like to discuss. I always like doing that. I know a lot of people are uncomfortable uh, talking on the radio or on the air like this, but we really have so much better conversations. If you give me a question, I can answer it, but there are sometimes subsequent uh, points that people would like to cover in a particular answer. So if you would uh, like to discuss it, please feel free to just send me a text to 502-599-9972 and I'd be happy to uh, talk with you about your question and uh, help you get the answer that you're looking for and everyone else to get the answer that they're looking for at that time as well. 502-599-9972. Also, I want to uh, remind you that uh, if you're looking for answers about PEMF and about MagnaWave, you can go to the MagnaWave PEMF International Resources and Education page on Facebook. You can go there and uh, search in the uh, left-hand column of a group page is a, a search bar. So you can go in there and type in diabetes, you can type in arthritis, you can type in uh, equine hoof problems. And those questions that have been asked and information posted in the group will come up for you to be able to do some additional research and uh, see what um, is going on. So that's a great place to go to gain information as well with regard to PEMF and uh, MagnaWay. Uh, Hazel's with us. Good morning, folks. Tim, good, good morning. Thanks uh, for being with us again. Any questions, I'm here to answer them. There are several things that have come up over the last few days that people have asked, and I want to uh, uh, cover some of those questions and bring them up and uh, get, you, get you some answers. And so one was a conversation about heat. Heat is generally generated uh, when you are doing some uh, work on the body or if there's a problem. When you have an infection, you have a temperature, you have heat in the body. When you injure your elbow or your knee or you twist your back, there is often heat related to those areas, which is an indication that there is inflammation, an indication that something is going on. The body will produce heat. It's doing this to try to improve circulation to the area to naturally heal itself. And so that's where the question of heat quite often comes in, uh, where people say, should we expect the presence of heat as a sign of healing in an area and an indication regardless of the time healing is in progress? Well, by virtue of the MagnaWave and the PEMF penetrating the body and actually improving the blood circulation, the blood oxygenation, it's going to be a natural thing for the MagnaWave to reduce the heat. Now, think about this. We're improving oxygenation for the area which helps reduce inflammation, helps the healing process take place, thereby will reduce the heat. Does that mean that the body is not healing? No. Does that mean that the pre and when you're finished, if there's still a lot of accurate things going on or a lot of action going on, the heat can actually come back. We want to help improve the healing to where the heat goes away and we have the healing. So it gets, when you stop and think about it, it can be a little convoluted, but the heat comes when the injury is there or the illness or the disease is there. We want to enhance the oxygenation, enhance the blood flow to the area, which would naturally reduce the heat. The more we heal, the less the heat is present. So when we're treating, we don't increase the circulation to where heat increases. 
uh, we actually serve to help reduce the heat. That does not mean that we're not healing something. Uh, so I hope that answers that particular type of question. And that plays for about anything you're doing, whether you're, it's a broken bone or a strain or a pull back or an, it's a temperature, infection, whatever it may be. We, by virtue of our processes, typically reduce the heat to the area because of the improved oxygenation. Hope that was clear enough. If not, send me a text. I will, uh, we can discuss it further. If you'd like to talk with me about that, uh, send me a text to 502-599-9972. I'll phone you back and we can have a conversation about whatever question it is that you would like to have answered. Okay, so let's go here. I've got some other, uh, let me put this down. I've got some other questions uh, that have been asked. One is uh, PEMF and diabetes. Is PEMF effective for type 2 diabetes? Well, what happens is the PEMF studies have been shown and people have tested, have um, uh, talked about the benefits. Again, what we're doing is we're making all the cellular tissues of the body healthier. We're helping, helping them to be as strong and as vibrant as they can be. And it's been shown that P, not only do the PEMF therapies help to condition all the tissues of the body, to be as healthy as possible. But as we get older, they also accelerate the natural health recovery of diabetic tissues. Now we can go more in depth to that, talking about the uh, AGSs in the body and how that gets into the tissue uh, and that makes it for, ret for retinopathy and, and issues that people have when it comes to diabetes. And so basically what the PEMF does for diabetic tissue is it helps it be as healthy as it can be. It helps it recover. And so it works in concert with your diet, with your exercise, with the medications that you're taking to help the body overall be healthier. Again, we come back to the basis that we often talk about improved oxygenation, improved blood flow, as I say, it can work a lot of wonderful things, a lot of wonderful action. You might say good oxygenation, good blood flow can work miracles on the body as far as our health and recovery is concerned. Will something in particular, if will MagnaWave or PMF in particular, re reverse your diabetes, your type 2 diabetes? While it helps the tissues of the body, it's not going to have an effect on everything that is taking place. Your diet is certainly important. How long you've had this particular indication is certainly important and how you want to deal with it and what you have to do as you approach those types of situations. So we like to talk about it as in concert with everything that's going on. You know, if you're, if you're at a venue and you're listening to a concert or you're doing something and someone's on a speakerphone next to you or they're showing pictures in the theater and they're looking at pictures on, it's disturbing, it's not comfortable for you to be there. Well, the same thing takes place in your body. If you have everything in concert, everything working together, then everything can work uh, more appropriately and more successfully uh, with the recovery that you're looking for, or whatever the situation may be. So um, I hope that helps with the diabetes and, and PEMF. Uh, I know that in the past I have been pre-diabetic and I treat myself all the time. Uh, I am a, a PEMF junkie, if you will. Uh, I have some neuropathy in my feet, non-diabetic related at this point. It's my doctor tells me you get old, you have issues. And I uh, like to, I don't feel old, but we get old uh, and things happen. But I treat myself all the time. And the more I treat, the more aggressive I am on certain areas at certain times, the better I feel and the better results that I uh, receive uh, as I'm doing this. Okay, we had a question this last week about stents and, and um, stents in the heart, stents in other blood vessels of the body to where there's been an aneurysm or a problem going on. And some people have said, oh my gosh, you can't get around a stent. Well, we have learned over the years that with implants, uh, when people have rods and screws and things like that, we always want to test for comfort, certainly. But when you have those kind of situations, we found, people have found that they are able to treat comfortably, not have any issues, and still relieve the pain that they may have in their muscles or their joints, even though they have implants. Now, the same is true for stents. Now, there are some stents that they put in that are uh, programmed. 
They are uh, for brain issues and, and, brain and, and blood flow to the brain for specific indications to where they program and, and um, uh, I'm going to say electrically program or computer program those stents to operate at certain times, to operate at certain manners. And those types of stents can be exposed to certain powers of magnetic fields. And so it's very important to understand where you are uh, with those particular types of stents. Now, with that said, if it's, and it's the same thing for any other type of implanted device. Some people have pain devices implanted that release uh, signals or release fluids and things like that into the body uh, that are electrically controlled just like a pacemaker or a defibrillator, we don't operate near or around those types of apparatus. So if a stent is programmed, if you have a, a, a device implanted that you control or is battery operated or you have a defibrillator or a, um, a uh, uh, you know what I mean, a, a defibrillator or, what am I, what am I, I can't think of the name of that, I just talked about it. But <laughs> Uh, when you have an electrical device like that, we stay away from it. Now, there are new pacemakers, that's the term I was looking for, that are made that are called bipolar, that we find that we can treat your hips and your back if you have a pacemaker, as long as we're a foot or so away from the pacemaker uh, they, in those types of situations. But as a rule, it's always best to make sure what you're treating and what you're around. So that's the electronically controlled implants and stimulators into the body. Now, let's come back to stents in the heart, stents in a blood vessel because of an aneurysm or something like that. Uh, we have found, my wife has two stents in her heart and a wire mesh heart repair that was done to repair a hole in her heart. And she has treated herself aggressively on her back and shoulders because she has three herniated discs that actually are the three herniated discs are what brought us to this business uh, and, and, and brought us to the business. She bought a machine because it helped her immediately. And, and so she has three herniated discs, an ascending, well, I'm going to talk about that at this point, two discs, two stents in her heart and a wire mesh heart repair. Treat yourself aggressively. Treat yourself regularly whenever she's having some pain with her with her discs, and there is no issue treating around the stents. There's nothing going on. Again, even though we we create a magnetic field and it is a pulsed magnetic field, we don't pull things. We don't. We're not like a magnet that pulls something or attracts something. So when they have a stent in the body, we're not going to pull on it, move it, cause it to do anything. If that's not what we're doing, and not and not what's happening. And so it's just very important that you always treat in those types of areas that are very comfortable, moderate setting, which you would certainly do because when you're treating the torso and the body, you typically can't turn the machines up as high as they're capable of going. And so that's the kind of thing you're dealing with. So we have found that, that of course, you wanna talk with your doctor, understand the stent, understand the reason for it being there, understand what other things can be uh, interfering with it or those types of situations, always talk to your doctor, always understand that all we're doing is promoting some health, health, healthiness and energy uh, improvement in the body. Uh, so again, uh, this just kind of approaching the situation uh, uh, with the stent. If you'd like to talk further about that, send me a text, 502-599-9972, and I'd be very happy to uh, call you back and have a conversation with you about that type of of situation. Now let me see here, let me come back to the uh, Facebook page and see uh, if we've had some questions. Uh, Pacemaker, thanks Tim for reminding me about uh, We have a question from Greta, can I treat uh, a woman that has run over by a forklift and has broken legs and a total uh, knee replacement? Most assuredly. Uh, if, you, if her legs are broken, you want to, and, and I don't know when this happened, but if she's having pain because of the, the severity of the injury and how things have healed and where there is scar tissue and all of that and there's pain as a result of that, certainly you can help reduce with the improved oxygenation and improved blood flow, you can potentially help relieve the pain in those areas. If she's had a knee replacement because of a crushed bone or whatever happened in, in the accident, again, uh, treating knee replacements, we do it all the time, knee hip replacements to help reduce, help reduce the inflammation, 
help the oxygenation to the area for overall uh, wellness and, and health improvement um, as we as we go on. So most certainly, Greta, I would think that you could uh, chase that type of uh, uh, treat that type of situation. Let me see here what else uh, other questions that we may have. Oh, that's refreshing. I'm sorry. They'll give it just a second here to refresh. Let's see. Um, I talked about the heat. I uh, got that one. Talked about the stents, uh, PMF and diabetes. Let's see if we have any other questions. God, we've co we've covered a lot of stuff here already uh, this morning. Let's have a look here and see uh, what we've got. Good morning, Jason. How are you this morning? Um, Bubba, thanks for being with us. We always are happy when, when people join us uh, on the program. Uh, is there an outside temperature in the cold? Um, uh, I have a semi and it's very cold in Kentucky. Let me see if I can bring this. Oh, here it is. It's on the screen here. It goes away quickly on my iPad when I'm on the uh, program here and I can't see it real quickly. Here it is. Is there an outside temperature that is too cold or too hot to use your machine? I have a semi and it will be very cold in Kentucky this week. My The vortex is going through. It's going to be cold everywhere. I'm not sure if I should uh, reschedule until it is warmer out. Technically, there's no temperature uh, that is an issue for the uh, utilization of the machine uh, when it's cold or when it's too hot. If the machine becomes too warm, uh, it will stop. Uh, it, we have had situations in the past where people are in very hot climates. They have the machine in their car. Let's say it gets up to 140 degrees in their car and they take the machine out, go into the barn, turn it on, put it on a higher setting, and away they go. And when it gets up to 150, 160 degrees in certain elements of the machine and it gets too hot, it'll shut off. So we always say when you're in that situation, turn your machine on, allow it to fan, to run for a little bit, to cool it down so it works okay. As far as the cold is concerned, we've really never had too much of an issue of a machine not operating when it's cold. There's nothing going on that would keep it uh, from operating in the cold. So I would, ne would not necessarily worry about that. I would be cautious about when it is so cold and so freezing, metals freeze. I mean, they get very cold. Could they become a little, or, or uh, porcelain parts and things like that, plastic parts, could they become, when they're frozen, a little more brittle to not take sudden hits and drops and that kind of stuff? So you want to be cautious uh, about that. If your coils are frozen, if they're in the car and they're basically frozen, you take them out and you start working them, well, you could potentially crack the, the plastic or the rubber on the coils. Uh, but as a rule, if you're in normal temperatures before you begin to treat and, and you're okay, that should, that should not be an, uh, an issue. So that's a great question, Brittany. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for asking, um, and I'd be happy to answer. Let me see. I think I got, let's see if something came up here. Um, pull it up. Uh, nothing there. Let's see if there's a text over here. Um, what type of power cords can you use, uh, is the question. Well, certainly uh, the machines are powered by the power cords, similar power cords that are used for desktop computers, many TV sets. Uh, it's that same type of cord. They come in various lengths, 5 feet, uh, 6 feet, 12, or 12 feet, uh, whatever. And those are the power cords that work. Now, as far as extension cords are concerned, you would you typically want an extension cord that's going to carry good power. You don't want to have a small household extension cord as the extension cord that you're using for your machine. So if you're using a power cord, you want like the orange extension cords or they're green, whatever color they may be with a nice... Uh, uh, thickness uh, to the extension cord. They'll carry ample power. It only takes a couple of light bulbs worth of power to uh, power the devices uh, that we're using. So, but you do want to have a power cord that's going to give you good steady flow of electricity. And when you talk about that, you talk about hot and cold. Quite often when you have situations, and this happens when people are outside, if they're treating horses, people working 
uh, on humans and small animals in an office environment, this is typically not a situation uh, that is an issue. And that, that comes that, that when there is power surges, that can have an effect on how the machine operates. So you, in, in other words, it may stop or it may cause it to have an issue. So you wanna make sure that, that uh, uh, everything is as consistent as possible. Hence, good power cords, good connections, good grounds, the whole thing uh, that are always there. So, um, great question on the power cords. Um, let's see, did somebody have temperature outside? All right, there was a question that I received. Let me see if I can pull that up. That's that one. Um, no, not there. Sorry, trying to find everything. Heat minded, diabetes, what was it? Oh, here it's on the, uh, let me pull it up. It's on the Facebook page that was uh, asked. Let me pull, go down here a little bit and see if I can find this one. Here it is. Uh, oh, that was the stent. That's a good one. Let's see, come down. Um, cleaning attachments. Someone has asked about cleaning attachments. Uh, this comes into play if you're treating animals and you have hair and, and things like that, dust and dirt. Some people use wipes and they and they and it's a static situation. They don't feel that they get them as, as clean as possible. To have a soap and water um, bucket that you pull out and you, and you put a little soap on it and wipe it down uh, is certainly adequate. Some people use a, uh, a hand towel with some bleach on it. Um, or you know bleach and water to uh, clean the coils that works out uh, very well and can be effective uh, let's see here um, but that's typically the situation on cleaning the machines uh, oh yes yeah, someone uh, that's I just remember the question that I was searching for here and I want to cover that but the first one is what external power sources um, are needed to run MagnaWave machines on the road uh, any generator that will produce uh, something in the neighborhood of 500 to 1,000 watts of power, even though it only takes about 160 watts of power, a couple of light bulbs to run the machine, you want something that is generating enough consistent, pure sign power uh, to operate your machine. So anytime you're with a digital machine, of course, we suggest it for everything. You want what is called a pure sine wave a converter or inverter or a pure sine wave type of signal. Now a good generator, a Honda or whatever the electric generators are, or a good battery pack uh, power source like a motorcycle battery, you know, the smaller uh, battery packs that you can get that recharge them. Anything that produces a significant, again, 500 watts to 1,000 watts of power is significant, is, is uh, fine for powering and operating the devices uh, that we're using. So small generators are fine, small battery pack uh, units are fine. Uh, if you're going to use an inverter off of a car battery or use a battery with an inverter, you want a pure sign inverter so it makes sure that the electric signal uh, coming to the machine is as clean and pure as possible. So that's uh, the situation for uh, outside. Um, oh, where'd it go? Uh, power cords can we use? What external power course sources? Machines in Europe and what they need to do to operate them. Okay. Uh, Europe runs on 220. Uh, someone asked the question about, let me do two things. Um, someone asked the question about the difference between the Semi and the Semi 3 and the Semi 5. Uh, the Semi 5 is a, one of the newer machines that is out. The two machines are operating at a, a virtually the same power output. The Semi operates at low, medium, and high. It's a machine we've been building now for a couple, two or three years, and it operates low, medium, and high, and um, uh, that's it. That's what it does. The Semi 5 operates on five different power levels, one through five, which just gives you a little more versatility in how you are powering the machine. For example, if you're doing an animal and you're, you're treating with the large wave wings, you may want to treat on a three or a four instead of a five. 
or even in some cases a tube because of the, the size of the animal, the area that you're treating, or, or what's going on. With the Semi-3, you have three settings, low, medium, and high. So most of the time with the wings, you're gonna be on the low to medium, whereas you could maybe wanna be on the four, and the animal would handle the four perfectly. So you just have a little more versatility with the five to the three. Uh, with the semi-5 to the semi-3. So that's the difference. The power on the highest setting is virtually the same. But in the, on the 3 setting, the medium is between the 2 uh, and or the 3, just right there on, let's say, 3. The 2 and the 4 is certainly different. So that's the primary difference on the two machines. Now, uh, the person also asked the question, and this goes to the other question that was just asked, is what about when we're dealing with 220 in Europe. And the, the spark chamber machines that are currently available uh, typically have to have a transformer if you're gonna use them in Europe uh, or in um, or Australia or South America, someplace like that that operates on 220. You need a transformer. All right, with the digital machines, the Semi-3, the Semi-5, the Vesta Duo, and the Maya are smart machines. You can plug that machine into the wall and it will pick up the type of power that's being delivered to it and will operate accordingly. So if you go to Europe, all you need is a wall adapter, plug the machine into the wall adapter, not a transformer, but just the adapter for the plug, plug it into the wall, plug the machine into it, and you're good. So people who, two things, people who are looking for machines in Europe and Canada and Australia that are CE approved, the, our digital devices are fitting that envelope that they are in, in fact, in the, in the stages of CE approval, everything's granted, just waiting for one little final checklist uh, for CE, but that's how they apply into the CE thing. Also, the power level. They are smart machines and can be used very easily. So people who travel a lot or people, whatever that situation may be, the uh, digital machines are smart and can work on any, any power source. Again, the spark chamber machines, if you go out of the country and need to take your machine, you, just, you need a transformer. Transformers in many cases are heavy. I mean, the transformer itself weighs 10 to 15 pounds for the transformer. They work very easily, plug it in the wall, Click on what it is, plug your machine into it, bingo, you're ready to go. But it is just an added step that you need to use uh, when you are uh, utilizing a machine uh, when you're requiring 220 power. Okay, let's see. Um, and Aaron has posted a link uh, to Amazon showing you some different generators and battery packs uh, that are available. And um, so those are certainly uh, there for you to use. Let's see here. Let me refresh this page and come back and see if there's any other questions. If, you have, if you'd like to visit with me, uh, give me a call. If you give me a uh, text and you want to visit, we'll get you some uh, uh, MagnaWave gear today um, for your calling in and having a conversation. Uh, please uh, feel free to do that. 502-599-9972. It seems like when we took the Christmas break, uh, people have quit calling uh, or not calling as much. Before Christmas, we were talking all the time with conversations, but then we took a few weeks off there to or, or to start traveling and get going. So now we need to get back into the swing of uh, having conversations. I love the conversation because as I've shared, it just gives you an opportunity to uh, talk about more stuff, get a little bit more in depth on the questions that you're looking to, uh, to have answered. Okay, let's see here, let me come down. See if we've had any other questions. Um, don't see anything else coming up at this point. Let me click on this. I want to make sure to sure turn my power off. Okay. This gives me all the questions over here on the side. Uh, have you ever had a P? Okay, let's see. Oh, oh, someone's asked, doing a poll. Great. All right. Let's see here if I can get the questions. Sandy Travis is with us. Um, outside temperature. Looks like we've got most of the questions that people are asking answered. I'd be happy to stay and talk. I don't want to just uh, uh, babble and get lost in things. I don't want to just talk to be talking. I want to certainly talk about the questions that you may have so you get the answers that you're looking for with PEMF because it is, it's such a vibrant uh, method of receiving uh, treatment and health and wellness. Let's see. Um, 
Let's see, MagnaCon tickets are available. That's a, a text that was put up. Uh, yes, they are. We're going to have a great MagnaCon this year. If you're a certified practitioner and you come to MagnaCon, it uh, qualifies you for the CE credits that you need to maintain your certification. Um, or you can take the certification uh, continuing education online. People have asked us since we've had the certification where we're going with it. Um, it it's there why we have continuing education because things are changing all the time. Uh, Aaron, our tra director of training, is putting guidelines into the app. Uh, if you're looking for guidelines, you want to know where they are, they're in the MagnaWave app. Uh, we're having them post guidelines every day on Alexa. That's something you can do if you have an Alexa device and you'd like to get my daily flash briefing with information about MagnaWave and PEMF. Go to the, uh, your Alexa, go to Amazon and sign up for the MagnaWave flash briefings and uh, you can pick up a hint or a tidbit every day on PEMF. We also have all the guidelines, human, small animal, and equine or large animal in the MagnaWave app uh, that's available to certified practitioners to uh, be able to see different things that are available to them as well. And we're starting a new service or a new opportunity for you to learn more and it will be, it's from Alexa, through Alexa and uh, uh, Echo, the Amazon Echo, and it will be skills. It'll be the MagnaWave skills. So you'll be able to log into your uh, Alexa account and be able to ask a question. Uh, Alexa, how do we treat this? Or MagnaWave, how do we treat that? Or how is the, what is the guideline for treating arthritis? And then the answer will come back to you. So you'll be able as a practitioner to be with your clients and they'll say, well, what about this? And you can say, well, let's find out. And you'll be able to say, hey, Alexa, what's the MagnaWave guideline for treating arthritis? And Alexa will then give you, uh, either by from me or from uh, Alexa herself, the guideline for the question that you're asking. So that will be the MagnaWave skills. So you'll be, and we're, the, the challenge to that, not a challenge, we have all the information, but we need to load as many of the questions as we can into the process so you can ask a question and get an answer. It doesn't do us any good to have five answers in there and you're asking a hundred questions. So we're gonna, we're gonna start out with 100, 150, questions that are the most que most often asked questions about guidelines, procedures, uh, questions that people have with regard to uh, PEMF and MagnaWave, and you'll be able to ask those questions on demand and get the answers that you're looking for. It's our whole goal to give you the information you want when you want it, whether you're a practitioner or somebody who just wants to learn more about PEMF and MagnaWave and the benefits for your health and wellness. So that's that's coming. Uh, I have some recording I need to do on that. I'm going to start uh, that uh, this week, and we're going to go going to go from there and uh, help and grow and uh, that type of thing. Let's see. We have another question here. Let's pull that one up. Um, are we in the process of becoming part of the American Association of Drugless Practitioners? Yes, we are. Um, we want to be able to be a part of any group that is beneficial to the development and growth uh, of our modality, of the PEMF modality, in order to make it all better for you, the people needing health and wellness or wanting health and wellness, and uh, to help uh, grow your improve your health and wellness uh, as we go. So again, if you have any questions, give me a text at 502-599-9972. I'll call you back. If I call you back, I'm going to give you some MagnaWave gear, your choice. Whether you want a hoodie or a hat or a cooler cup, whatever it may be, uh, it's your choice uh, for the MagnaWave gear that you might like to have. And we'll have a conversation or get a question answered for you. I don't see any other questions uh, popping up at this point. Let me see. Um... Uh, got those questions answered. Very good questions. We've been going about 30 minutes. So we've answered several different uh, uh, inquiries and questions today. So I want to make sure that you that you have those uh, types of questions. You know, PEMF, I was talking with a gentleman yesterday and uh, he's talking about uh, working with a clinic and putting some stuff together. And we've talked about how, how the, what I've experienced uh, from the beginning, when I started dealing with PEMF in 2002, um, it, my exposure, there were, there were devices outside of the country. There weren't too many in the United States. There were certainly 
uh, the companies that are here today that are doing low power stuff were available. But even back then, those companies, the, 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 the momentum was not there to where it was really talked about and used uh, continually and used a lot. And, and over time, just because it's worked, uh, it, the momentum has increased. I was telling this person that, that when I started with the high power devices in 2006 and 2007, there weren't many devices at all, a number that I throw out. There weren't three or four devices east of the Mississippi River. There were, but there weren't very many. I mean, I, there weren't hundreds, but there certainly were not thousands like there are today. So the, the momentum, the use, the understanding, uh, back then, 10, 12 years ago, there was only one or two devices that had even approached the FDA for approval. Uh, the first one was the non-union uh, bone healing and the non-union fractures in humans, and those types of devices were used and, and brought into the marketplace. Now, there are several devices. The most recent one is called the Optune. It is a device that's a PEMF device for glioblastoma brain tumors, uh, cancer tumors of the brain, that the device is FDA approved. Certainly, we're working for our FDA approval and our studies are in the process of being completed and analyzed and submitted to the FDA. Uh, but it's just changed so much in terms of how it's utilized, what people have seen, what it can do. And so that's just, that's exciting. And uh, it's fun to see it continue to grow. Let's see, we have another question. Uh, that, well, that question I talked about earlier. Uh, so if you have a question, please feel free to uh, shoot me a text, 502-599-9972. And I'd be happy to uh, answer any of those questions uh, that you may have. Uh, let's see here, 936. Let me take a look here and see if there's any other questions that have come up. Um, oh, I've got a uh, texted twice. Oh, texted twice. Let's see what I can do. Let's ring up here. Let's do that. I don't know why I didn't get the text, Emily. Let me bring it up. Hold on. Uh, okay. Got a number here. Four. Four one. Got it. All right, here we go. Hello, this is Emily. Hey, Emily, how are you? I'm sorry I missed your text. That's okay. Hi, Pat. Hi. Hi. So, um, so I have a question about treating my EPM gelding. Okay. Okay, and I... I'm about halfway through the certification process, so if, if this is somewhere in there, you know, I apologize. It but, is, but that's okay, because things okay. change. So I have this gelding who has already been treated uh, with uh, Marquis for EPM a mm -hmm. few months ago, mm -hmm. and I've been working on him with my, semi, with my semi for, oh, since November. Okay. And he's showing a lot of improvement. Um, but I wanted to see if there was a protocol for these EPM horses or, you know, how often I should be doing him. And, and that's a great question. And let me just kind of give a little history. This, a lot of this is in the certification, but just let me give you a little history for those who may not be familiar with this, or this may be the first time they've heard this type of question. Um, when we first learned about EPM, back, again, going back 10 years or so, when we were out on the racetracks in various places, uh, treating people and horses and we came up on horses with EPM and someone would say this horse is sore We don't know what's going on. Maybe the doctor hadn't diagnosed it yet that type of thing and I treat the horse and they'd be worse Right because we move the parasite or we you know and 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 so it just attacks more nerve tissue So we learned immediately right then that if there was an EPM horse we would need to treat more times to get things taken care of in the horse. Now, the challenge has become that depending on the damage to the nerve tissue that was caused by the parasites and the EPM itself, that in some cases you need continual treatment. Now, that doesn't mean you need to continue treat continually every day, but that could mean that if you're in a situation that once a week, once every two weeks, may be required to keep everything, the circulation, the inflammation in the area down and, and to help them along. 
Now, there is beginning to be, and, and things have changed this way, in the beginning, or I say the beginning, years ago, we would talk to veterinarians and they'd say, well, we have an EPM situation and I'm gonna start the marquee or I'm gonna start this medication. And we would wait until they were finished with the uh, medication um, to, to treat. And I got somebody uh, calling in, that's a different number. But so, let me decline that. Let's see if we come back here. Okay, so I'm sorry. Um, so we would wait until after the medication and then we'd go on the regimen. We'd treat seven or eight, 10, 12 times to get the horse better recovering and, and going on. And then we'd be in that position to where we may get to the point, you know, we always say treat as long as function improves and then as often as necessary to maintain the function that you've achieved. So you get to that point that maybe you'd treat this racehorse twice before every race or you treat it, make sure you treated it every week. So to answer your question, your horse will tell you how often it needs to be treated. Okay. And, and so they, you know, and, and this, with that said, you, you can get through the EPM, get through the treatments, get the horse back in a more healthy state to where he's performing the way you want him to, but then your, your perform, what, what, what's your discipline? Uh, he's a Western pleasure horse. Okay, so you're gonna go to the ring, you're gonna have all those things, the stress, the practice, the, right. you know, all that kind of stuff that's going to make the horse sore or make the horse need to be uh, refreshed and, and get better recovery and that type of thing. Can, and, and in addition to the fact that you're dealing with a horse that's had EPM. So you got a lot of variables coming in that are. Aspect of the device and that type of thing. So. I was going back that some veterinarians now are saying when they're using the medication, treat at the same time, which enhances the medication, uh, makes it go through. But I'd have that conversation with my veterinarian and, right. okay. and, and make sure that they're on board with what you're doing and they, and they, don't, they may say, that's fine, let's do that. Uh, and, and that's kind of the case. I mean, you kind of bring it in when people are treating people who are receiving chemotherapy. Uh, it, it's kind of been a rule that we wait till after the chemotherapy because we don't want to do anything in the blood flow or uh, how things are assimilated in the body to make someone not feel, make someone feel worse than they would feel from the natural chemotherapy. But in Europe, uh, in, in various places when they're administering chemo, they're also doing PEMF at the same time. Here, we kind of take a little different stance, and we certainly uh, qualify anything we want to do with the doctors before we do it. So I hope that helps answer your question. Yes, it does, and it just clarifies, you know, what I've been doing all along. I just wanted to make sure I was doing the right thing. Yeah, and, and so you're good, and, and it'll work out uh, just fine. So I'm going to tell you, if you would email info at magnawavepemf.com, they'll get back to you and get you some gear. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Pat. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for calling. Right. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Okay, got some new comments. Let me come back here. Uh, Jason has got a question. Let's see if we can get, uh, get Jason on the line here. Oh, we're going to get him. Hey, Jason. Hey, Mr. Pratt. What's up, buddy? Oh, man, just, uh, I, I, I had, uh, I was trying to run this thing down, uh, so I don't. Yeah. Okay. Um, one, one thing I kind of wanted to touch on, and, and, and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of it on our, our uh, our practitioner page was, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, are, are buying these machines and they're moving into these areas that are, where they're, PMA, PEMF is not really, you know, around, right. and <clears throat> so we're kind of setting the, the, the ground for, uh, you know, for the PEMF industry Correct. In, in some of these areas, and then, you know, you get some people that go ahead and they start buying these little machines, or they buy a match or whatever, about six or eight months, or even a year after somebody's gone in and set the ground, Right. and then they start undercutting everybody, and my... I just kind of want to touch on this because, uh, and I don't, I'm sorry if this is the wrong place to do it, but I just kind of want to touch on this because our practice, you know, I see a lot of people getting uh, distraught or aggravated or whatever, and just kind of let them know that, 
you know, this happens in every industry. You know this, okay? This happens in every industry. It happens in the ferry business. It's happened in my leather business. It's happened right here with, with, with my microwave business. And we just got to keep our heads up, keep, keep trucking along like we're going. Well, you know, you're absolutely right. And I had this conversation with somebody yesterday, and, and it, 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 you could, I can talk to them blue in the face. You, you're the same way. We can just keep talking and say, you're worth what you present. And, and people feel like, oh my gosh, I got to give it away. You do have to give it away in a brand new area to get people to understand what it is. But uh, it, you have to provide value to what you're doing. And you're absolutely right. And, and, you, and thank you for saying it happened in your farrier business. It happened in your leather business. And it does. Uh, people come along and they discount or they're discount stores and they're selling stuff. And if you can't stay in business, you're not... You're not going to help anybody, and you have to be able to do that. And and so you're absolutely right. We need to keep keep our head up, keep marching forward, and and keep doing it. History has kind of shown us someone who who discounts continually or get discounts down to the rock bottom continually. They don't last very long. I hate to say that. I'm not trying to hope somebody doesn't stay in business, but you have to be profitable in whatever business that you're in and you have to present. I will tell you, Jason, that it, it happened to me when I first started. I was in uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, had my machine. It was per I don't think anybody had seen this thing in, in the horse world at that point to much uh, depth. And a veterinarian came to me and I was charging, I think, $75 in treatment at the time. And I was going around, I was getting some treatments, but not what I wanted. He said, you got to raise your price. And I said, why? He said, it's not that I'm worried about you competing with me, but I'm going to tell you as a friend, and we'd be, become friends, that people feel like they're getting what they're paying for. I mean, it's amazing that you say that, but it's true. And, and so by you putting a, an amount that's fair, an amount that's profitable on your, on your pricing and your stuff, it, it, people feel that it's good and they're going to see the result and, and make it work and they're going to be happy. And uh, so you're right. And I really appreciate you uh, discussing it and uh, bringing it to the question. But, yeah, I just, uh, I mean, uh, my first question today was about the, uh, the uh, power sources. Uh, okay. Because I now have a semi and... Uh, and, you know, sometimes we run it on the 3500 watt generator uh, Honda that we have. But uh, uh, there's times that I'll run my max off of my, my inverter in my truck. Right. So, uh, but I didn't want to run that semi off of that inverter on that truck because I don't know if it's, what do you call that, sign, uh, clean sign? sign. Yeah, if, you, yeah. If, you, if you've got a sign inverter, you should be fine. Yeah. So I just, I, you know, but... Uh, then, then you answered that, and then I, I was sitting there thinking, and I'm like, all right. And then I remembered that everybody was, you know, kind of irritated about other people moving in on their on their uh, on their ground and stuff. So, you know, I just I, I just kind of wanted I just wanted to reach out to you and, and, and kind of put that out to everybody. But don't don't get flustered. Uh, just keep your head high and keep trucking along. It'll, it'll all work out. Well, you know, and, I, and again, I, I appreciate that, and, and you know, and, and here's the reality of it. I mean, if, if we controlled the whole game, uh, it, it'd be a different story, but we don't control the whole game. I mean, there are competitors. I mean, there's Chevrolet and Ford and Buick and, and all that stuff, and, and uh, you, you have competition, and that's going to be there no matter what. What we want to see happen is we want people to be educated. We want them to present themselves in a good manner. We want them to understand what they can do and what they can't do because then that gives more value to them and they can, they can charge their customers appropriately and, and uh, be more successful. You bet. You okay, bet. buddy. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks, Pat. Uh -huh. Y'all have a good day. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Great questions. Uh, if you'd like to discuss that further, you have something else that you'd like to talk about, please feel free to give me a text at 599 uh, what is it? 502-599-9972. Uh, I'd be happy to answer those questions or have a conversation with you about whatever it may be. Uh, and Jason, be sure to uh, email info at magnawavepemf.com and they'll hook you up with some gear and uh, Magnawave gear so when you can go out and your customers will see uh, where you are and what you're doing and uh, be happy with what's happening. Um, nicely, Tim responded, nicely said, Jason. So, you know, but that is a, that is a situation. I mean, if, if you're going to go into business, here, if, here's a tip. If you're going to go into business, you got to expect competition. Uh, that was not the problem in the beginning. The problem in the beginning was people didn't know what it was. 
I mean, I could charge three hundred dollars for treatment as long if they didn't know what it was and didn't believe that I believed what it was doing. It wouldn't make any difference. I could have charged ten dollars for treatment, and I wouldn't have done anything if I walked around timid and not knowing what I was doing and and not knowing how to treat and not knowing any of this. And it wouldn't make any difference if I was giving away or or uh, whatever. So it just it the important thing there was education, and and if and if you educate and you become educated and people can see that you're educated and people can see that you believe in what you're doing and they can see the results themselves or feel the results themselves, then what you charge is a matter of what's appropriate and a matter of what people are willing to, to pay. And that's the, that's the thing in any business uh, that you're dealing with. And that's how you have to, in the best way, uh, to approach it. Let's see, uh, getting close here on time, see if there's any other questions. If you have another question, drop it in the chat box on the Facebook page and I'll be able to have a look at it and uh, get you the answer that you're looking for. Uh, if over the week you have some things that come up that you want to uh, send to us, please do. You can call Aaron at the office, 502-742-7868, 502-742-7868. And Aaron will be happy to uh, answer your questions or get them recorded so we can talk about them next week on this program. Uh, we bring you the office hours every Tuesday um, for you to learn from, and then we repurpose them. We put them into the MagnaWave um, Alexa, MagnaWave Flash Briefings. We uh, put the information in the, the training sites. Uh, we just make sure that we give you all the information that you're, that you're looking for. We want you to be healthy and we want you to get the uh, relief and the wellness that you're looking for. That's the whole game. That's what it's uh, typically all about. Let's see here if we've had any other questions, uh, any other texts that have come in. Um, nothing there. Let's check over here just to make sure that we're in a good place. Oh, let's see. Um, let's see, 41, what number did I call? Oh, Greta had a question. Oh, Greta, there, let's see, I wanna make sure that I was got it. Um, we're good. I think we've got most everything uh, answered at this point. And it's been a good conversation. Good to be with you today. Uh, I'll give it just another second to see if something might um, pop in. I want to make sure that we get the questions answered. And I certainly have the time allotted here for the next 10 minutes to remain and answer potentially a couple more questions that you uh, may have. Uh, this is working out well on the road. I'm in the uh, clubhouse in uh, Jupiter, Florida. Uh, at the Palm Beach uh, Motor Coach Resort. And uh, as I said earlier, we're visiting with some dressage people down here and some veterinarians and uh, chiropractors uh, answering their questions, giving demonstrations. So if you're a doctor or a practitioner in the uh, Jupiter, Florida area and you'd like to learn more, have me come see you or come visit us uh, at the MagnaWave Express and get treated. We'd be happy to uh, do that and uh, give you some more information. So uh, give us a shout, call the office, send us an email, and we'd be happy to hook up and connect with you here in the uh, Jupiter, uh, West Palm Beach area of Florida. We were in Ocala for a few days. We went down to Naples and visited with some people in Naples, uh, uh, a family down there that was having some Parkinson's issues and we dealt with them and, and uh, we spent uh, four or five days working there. We've come over now to this area because Wellington, the, the racehorses, all that type of activity going on in the area. We want to be here to uh, work with veterinarians, doctors, individuals, and uh, uh, equine people to help them out with their health and wellness and understanding MagnaWave and MagnaWave uh, PMF. Everything uh, looks good. Um, don't see any other... Oh, what? To schedule... Oh, here we go. There's a thing. If you'd like to schedule a... Uh, uh, meeting with me at the MagnaWave Express, just uh, fill out the link and we'd be happy to uh, meet with you and uh, get some things done, helping you to your health and wellness. So with that said, I'm glad you've been with me today. It's always fun to be here and I look forward to visiting next week and uh, helping you get your questions and answer, answers about MagnaWave and PMF. Have a great, way, great week. Wave on to health and wellness and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.